Welcome to my 12 Days of Christmas video series. As you can see from the colors and the products that we're using today, these are not Christmas videos. We're just counting down to Christmas and opening up Christmas gifts from my 12 Days of Christmas box. I'm trying to combine these videos with sneak peeks from the brand new... I've got to close the cover. <laughs> the brand new January through April 2023 mini catalog. This will start in January, on January 5th for everybody. But if you're a demonstrator, you can pre-order right now. And so I have been working through my pre-order box every day, making a new project, sometimes scrambling a little bit <laughs> um, to, to come up with the project. And so today's project is one of those I feel like I'm throwing together at the last minute, but I couldn't help myself. I had to get this silly goose stamp set. This is a new photopolymer stamp set that's coming out. And I just have a thing for cute critters. <laughs> a couple days ago, I shared with you the rain or shine card I made where I die cut the bunny from the designer paper. I love the way this card turned out. I used the pearlized effects to create the background with the embossing folder. And so if you haven't seen that video, make sure to check it out. So today we're going to use the Silly Goose stamp set and I'm taking inspiration right from the catalog. If you have yours already, I'm on page 27 of the January through April mini catalog. I can't show you the inside pages of the catalog on video until the catalog launches January 5th. Um, but I can tell you that I'm going to create the layout that's on page 27 and I'm just changing up the colors. Um, I love the colors here and the Butterfly Kisses designer paper. So bright and playful and springy and it coordinates with today's gift. Are you ready to see what's inside? gift number seven for our 12 days of Christmas gift box. Let's give a little drum roll. Are you doing it at home? Come on. <laughs> oh, our, our day gift for our day seven gift is the fun flower resin shapes and this coordinates so perfectly with that butterfly kisses designer paper because it has the same colors in it i thought that this was so fun and springy and when i looked at the silly goose stamp set it kind of reminded me of the flowers that were in the goose's hat isn't this just so cute i would love to be floating along on a little inner tube with my friends right now instead it's cold and brown and dreary. <laughs> uh, we're going to Florida actually uh, after Christmas and so I'm really excited. Maybe I'll get to float on an inner tube with a sun hat and just enjoy some warmer weather and sunshine. All right, well, let's make our project today. I've got my pre-cut. Pre I'm just guessing based on um, what I see in the catalog. And you know what? I can't show you the, the catalog, but let me sketch out the card that we're making. I do this all the time when I am finding inspiration in a catalog. Just grabbing um, a pen. Oh, here, I have a... I knew I had a pen that wasn't blue. Um, <laughs> whenever I'm looking at the catalog, I love to sketch out the layouts that I see. So I do this sometimes in a notebook and it's a great place to kind of keep track of all the ideas that you see. So in this card we have, um, we actually have a designer paper piece that covers the entire background. And then there is a piece over here on the side and it has just like a slight angle I over-exaggerated there, but <laughs> just a slight angle. And then the piece with the goose is a square that's die cut. And there's a ribbon back here. Okay, so now you can kind of see where I'm going with this card. My sketching wasn't the best today, but you kind of you kind of got the idea. So I have a piece of designer paper that is four and a quarter four and a quarter by five and a half. I'll put the measurements in the video description for you. And then I have a piece of um, Calypso Coral cardstock that's two inches by four and a quarter. And I am gonna cut that at a little bit of an angle. So you could probably do four inches on this one. And then I've die cut a square from 
The Stylish Shape Dies. I just love these. They're so versatile. If you don't have the Stylish Shape Dies, definitely add them to your list. Uh, maybe wait until January and get them during celebration. I'm actually not sure if they're available right now. I know for a little while they were unavailable because they were so popular during our seasonal sale. Um, so if they're not available right now, add them to your list for celebration in January and February because then you can get free stuff when you buy $50 or more during celebration. It's such a great time to stock up on favorites. So this includes um, stitched circles, stitched squares, and stitched banners. And the dies have stitching so that when you die cut, um, it die cuts both a border around and it leaves a stitched edge on the on the paper that you're cutting from. So you get kind of a stitched window and a stitched shape. It's the same set of dies I used on that bunny card. I just used the big circle. So we're going to do that one and we're going to do some coloring with Stampin' Blends. I'm taking my color inspiration from the designer paper. Um, so I've chosen Fresh Freesia, Parakeet Party, Calypso Coral, um, we don't have crushed curry, so I've got Daffodil Delight Stampin' Blends, little smoky sleigh, and for the water, I'm gonna do some pool party. So whenever we're stamping with Stampin' Blends, or coloring with Stampin' Blends, we wanna use the Memento ink pad to color. This is a, um, what kind of, I just had a, a brain fart. <laughs> it is a water-based ink. No, I guess that's it. Yes. So the difference between the stays on, which is an alcohol solvent, not alcohol, a solvent based um, ink pad and the Memento. The Memento is a water based ink pad. So if you're using watercolor, then you don't want to use Memento because then it'll smear the lines when you watercolor over the lines. Oh, no. <laughs> we have got some spammy stuff coming through. If you see an option to report, please do. I'll delete them. Um, and take care of them after the live, but I don't know how to do it while I'm live. Um, oh, I think I got it. Unwanted. Okay. Woohoo! <laughs> I think that's a first. The first time I've done that while we're alive. All right, so we're stamping in Memento because it's a water-based ink and the Stampin' Blends will not bleed the line. You don't want to use the stays on with Stampin' Blends because the Stampin' Blends will bleed the stays on line. So Memento for Stampin' Blends, stays on for water coloring. So if you're using like your aqua painter or the blender pens or a paintbrush and some water. So we're going to stamp our silly goose who has a little friend on her back. It's a little froggy. So cute. And I didn't even notice that this was a separate stamp until I was looking at the sample. And there is like a little tiny wave stamp and it is meant to add some additional waves to our goose. So I'm just going to add just a little bit more to kind of fill that out. And you can you could keep going if you want, but I think that fills up our space very nicely. Um, while I'm stamping, I had, uh oh, I had <laughs> a little piece for the greeting. Let's see, maybe this one was it, um, of the parakeet party. And so the sentiment on this card is going to say, you've got a friend in me. Oh, isn't that cute? That reminds me of the Toy Story song. <laughs> um, I can't, I can't sing it. I probably would get dinged. And I am not stamping very straight, so I'm gonna try. <laughs> I'm gonna try again, and I'll just do a little trimming. There we go. All right. Before I color, I'm going to do a little, just a little, a little angle on that, and that is just to mimic the sample. And I'm just gonna give this a little cut. I like using these blades, the craft and paper scissors, that's what they're called, <laughs> uh, because it's a nice long blade to cut a straight line without having to cut like twice or more than once. So I use my, my big scissors for cutting cardstock, even though mom, <laughs> even though mom yells at me, it's true. Um, all right, let's do some coloring. So I'm going to start with the um, the pool party and I just wanna add some, some pool party lines just kind of underneath. Um, well, I guess we'll just do a whole like doot, doot, doot. That's, that's good. I don't know. I, 
I didn't plan this very well. We're just going for it. I'm going to use the dark daffodil for the, um, the nose or the beak of the goose. And um, I was trying to decide. I think I want to bring in some of the fresh freesia. I'm going to use the dark one. I'm going to do fresh freesia on the... Um, I changed my mind. Fresh freesia on the um, the inner tube, but then I'm not sure what color to do for the polka dots. So leave a comment and let me know. Um, originally, I was thinking I would do the yellow, but I'm concerned that the yellow is too light to go with this fresh freesia. So let me know. I'm also going to make the, the flowers fresh freesia because um, they're fresh freesia here in the designer paper. And a frog, of course, it's going to be parakeet party. <laughs> I just love his little frog eyes looking up at this goose like I just love you so much. I'll add some green to the leaves up there. And then I'm going to do the hat in Calypso Coral. Lots of details on here. This is my kind of coloring. Little bits, little details. We don't, I don't have to worry about shading too much. <laughs> and, um, I'll do that in the center of the flowers. What do you guys think about those polka dots? Let me see if you left any comments for me about the polka dots. Yay! <laughs> I, I am loving all this new stuff. Okay, so I'm going to go with, um, I'm going to go with this Calypso Coral. I don't think you guys have an opinion, but I, I think I like that. I think it's a good contrast. And then the last thing I want to add, I just want to make this goose pop a little bit. So I'm going to use the light, um, the light smoky slate to just kind of go just on the outside. I think. Make that goose pop. I don't know. What do you think? It's a little darker than I wanted to. So I'm going to take the, um, I'm going to take the color lifter and just sort of like, it's not really a color lifter so much as a, like a blender. <laughs> so I'm just going to sort of blend out that, um, that gray a little bit so that it's not so, um, not so harsh. And that kind of just softens those lines. I think it makes the goose pop a lot. In fact, let's add some Wink of Stella. A little sparkle. You know what? I think I had a color on there. Oh, no. <laughs> I think there was a little color from something else I blended. That was unfortunate. I got a little pink on her. Well... Maybe a little blush. I don't know how well you can see it. You know what? We're also going to make the water sparkle because why not? All right. Let's get our card put together. I love quick card layouts. And I think this is one I'm going to have. Oh, there's my piece. <laughs> I knew it was around here. Um, quick card layouts that I can come back to. So I'm gonna have to try this one again. I kind of like it. We're starting with that designer paper piece on the background. It's covering up the whole piece of cardstock. So really you could use any color for your card base. Um, and sometimes I use um, thick white, but I'm actually out of thick white cardstock right now. How crazy is that, right? I have regular basic white cardstock, but I need to get some more thick for my card bases. So I chose the Fresh Freesia, and then we're going to have our little banner. Yeah, I love how all these colors kind of tie together. I often get my inspiration 
from designer paper color combinations. We're gonna add a little bit of ribbon back here. And um, again, I'm just mirroring the, um, the sample in the catalog. I love getting new catalogs because it's not only new product, but also brand new card ideas to copy and to case. And so um, I'm always excited to flip through. Like I look, I look once and I look at all the new product and then I look a second time to see all the samples, right? And I have to like tell myself to focus on the samples <laughs> because it, it's easy to get distracted. But if you, if you go through and do that, then there are so many gems. Even if you don't end up buying the stamp set, using the same layout um, can be really inspiring to just mix it up and use what you have. I'm gonna use my tear and tape trick to, um, to cover that up and then use some Stampin' Dimensionals. And yeah, it's definitely an idea book. Um, Susan says, put something under your white square. It's bleeding through. Uh, maybe it's extra, the extra thick cardstock. Um, this is the, the regular basic white cardstock and it is bleeding through. Um, so when you're, when you're stamping on your, um, or coloring, if you color really hard, yes, you definitely wanna use something like the grid paper, um, the one I was using is the small grid paper, which is a really great size. It doesn't take up too much room on your desk. Um, and that way you protect your surface, right? Because if you color really hard and it bleeds through, then you could get um, that, the marker, the alcohol marker on your table, on your work surface. And depending on your surface, it's an alcohol marker and it's gonna stain. <laughs> so uh, yes, if you color, if you color, um, if you color really hard and it's bleeding through a lot, definitely be sure um, to use something underneath, scrap paper, grid paper, another piece of cardstock, your silicone mat, any of those things will work beautifully. Thank you so much for the reminder, Susan. Um, okay, so we're looking for Stampin' Dimensionals. I should take a picture of my desk, you guys, because <laughs> it's outrageous. I'm gonna use some Stampin' Dimensional edges um, to put our square down. And I'm just tearing the edges here. And then we're going to take these off and add them to the card. And the last thing will be to embellish with our brand new Fun Flower Resin Shapes. So we'll have to choose which color that we wanna use because, oh, you know what, we have to add our greeting. <laughs> I almost forgot the words on there. Um, hmm. Originally, I was thinking I would put it here, but we're kind of running out of space. Is that too close to the edge? I kind of like it down here a little bit. What do you guys think? Hmm. Hold on. <laughs> I'm reserving the right to change my mind. Got to do a quick little tear up. Boop. Ah! Gentle pressure. Oh, but you know what? Our flowers are going to be going the wrong way. I was just thinking, what if we switch it and do a, a layout like this, but our flowers will be going the wrong way. So that is going to be an issue. So maybe we just scoot it over a tiny bit more, and then we've got some more room. I think I do like it on that side. What is this? Well, we'll just cover it up with a flower. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna put this down here and most of it hangs, uh, yeah, most of it is over that. So I'm going to just add a little bit of adhesive to the back. You've got a friend in me. That just seems like where my eye wants to go, so that's why I put it there. All right, now it's time for some embellishments, and I have to choose which color. I suppose I could use more than one color. Um, we could do some pink ones, or some yellow ones, or some purple ones. 
or all of them. Hmm. I usually like to do all the same color and I'm leaning towards the pink ones because I'm gonna cover that bit up. I'm leaning towards the pink ones because the inner tube is purple and we have the, the calypso coral back here. Like there's not a lot that that is the calypso coral. So I think this is it. Oh my gosh, I'm really loving these. I have to show you my other package. I used up all the purple ones <laughs> and all of the Calypso coral ones. So now I've got to start using the yellow and the green and a little more of the blue. These fun flower embellishments are so wonderful. I love the way they coordinate with that Butterfly Wishes designer paper and how cute they look with the Silly Goose stamp set. I hope you enjoyed the sneak peek for today. Be sure to tune in tomorrow at 1 o'clock p.m. Central Time. It is day eight, so we've got five more days of 12 days of Christmas, five more days of sneak peek projects every day. Leave a comment and let me know what is it you would like to see? What are some things that you've been seeing that you want to see a sneak peek of or a project with from the new upcoming mini catalog? I'll do my best to accommodate. I can't promise, but I'll show you as much as I can over the course of the next week. Thanks for tuning in today. If you enjoyed this project idea, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on future Stampin' Up! project making videos. Have a great day and I'll see you tomorrow.